Okay, so good afternoon. As I said, um, this afternoon session is introducing you to the Simsbert Youth Panel. And as you can see, I'm not alone, which is a very good thing because you may notice that my voice is a little bit hoarse at the minute. So fortunately, I've got backup. Um, so the members of the youth panel that we've got with me today are Eleanor Udall. Good afternoon, Eleanor. Hello. <laughs> um, Rachel Short. Hello, Hello Rachel. Hello, everyone. And chair of the youth panel, Malcolm McPhail. Hello, Malcolm. Hey, guys. Um, so just by way of introduction, now I'm not going to steal the thunder of Eleanor and Rachel um, because they're going to introduce themselves in a little bit more detail. But um, on this call, you've got myself, Malcolm, Eleanor and Rachel. My role at Simsper is business transformation manager and I've worked at Simsper for just short of two years. And I'm also delighted to be joined by chair of the Simsper Youth Panel, Malcolm McPhail. Um, just a, a very quick introduction to Malcolm, but he's got a huge amount of experience within the sector. So he's worked in sport and leisure for 34 years. During the last 20 years, he's operated at a senior exec and board level at Next Generation, David Lloyd Health, um, and life leisure, but he's also an ex-Scottish international hurdler and British counties champion as well. So a huge background there and delighted to have you with us today, Malcolm. Thank you. Thanks for that great intro. <laughs> I, I can't imagine the, tran the benefits of being a, um, an ex-professional hurdler and the transferability of being a professional jumping over obstacles person and and how that can transfer into working life particularly over the last 12 months which has just been one hurdle after another that, yeah and do you know what do you know what it comes down to discipline the discipline that i learned is a, a journeyman athlete transferring that into uh you know the business environment and discipline resilience and like like covid it's just a great example of, of how, this is how you, when you know how resilient you are. Uh, uh, so it, it's, 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 it's a natural transfer, Phil, to be honest. Uh, ab absolutely, absolutely. Well, great to have you with us and I'm sure um, everyone joining us today and anyone picking up this recording, perhaps at a later point, will we'll get to know a little bit more about you and your role within the youth panel as well um, over the next hour and a bit. Um, as I say, I'm not going to um, touch on the backgrounds of Eleanor and Rachel because they're going to do that a lot better than I could. Um, so, uh, but great to have you with us both on the call. So good afternoon. Um, we're just going to go over a little bit um, to start with. Um, this is what it's going to look like today, what we've sort of put together. Um, but I'm very kindly going to actually ask Malcolm if he'd like to do a little bit of background for us about the beginnings of um, the youth panel. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Helen. I'm, I'm going to do this really, really brief, briefly and hand you over uh, to, to, to the, the main, the, the, big, the big show, the, the, the youngsters. So I'm not going to take up too much, too much time. So a um, couple of years ago, Mark Woods, uh, our, our chairman at, at Simspa, having just joined Simspa um, a couple of months earlier, um, you know, phoned me up and said, what, what are you going to do for us? What, what, do you, what do you bring to the table, Malcolm? And if there was any doubt that it was just about the meetings, that was, that was really taken away from me. And I said, what do you mean, Mark? And he said, what's your legacy going to be? What, 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 what are you good at? What are you going to do for us? What, what difference are you going to make? And I, and I thought about it uh, and, you know, at Life Leisure at the time with a lot of youngsters, young people in promoted positions. And I said, you know what, I'm, I'm quite good at developing young people. And he said, fantastic. I've got, I've got this idea that I'm, I'm, I'm worried that Simspa isn't representative of the whole of the sector. And the big worry is, is young people. So what would, what would be your ideas in terms of developing a voice, a platform for, for, for young, young, young people? And I said, well, no, no pressure, Matt, Matt, there. And we kind of threw it about a bit and we had a couple of calls and then we come up with, with the youth panel. And uh, basically uh, with, with, the, with the viewpoint of giving young people a voice, creating uh, an organization that young people wanted to be part of 
but also more importantly, shaping uh, the direction of, of the flow and the travel line of, 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 of Simspa. So it wasn't just about, um, you know, stirring uh, the, the, the voice up. It was about helping them, helping for them to, to move Simspa in the right direction that was representative of, of, of uh, the, 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 the sector. Uh, that was reflected, I suppose, at the time um, in the, the, the conference, when, when I went along to the conference and realised it was full of middle-aged uh, guys and, and girls and women like my, 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 myself. How can that represent the future? Uh, nothing wrong with our age group and what we bring to the table, but just a bit of variety would be nice. Uh, um, and so that was that was a driver, and you know, but but just just the opportunity to hear um, what the the young people had to say, just get, give them a voice, and and the rest is history. Uh, <laughs> you know, we're, we're 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 two years into it. It's been a fantastic decision by Mark uh, uh, to to move us forward on that. Uh, right from the chief executive to Phil to, to Danny to everybody in some schools really embraced the youth panel and take it from me uh, I have to bring my A game to every meeting these guys are, are, are the real deal the selection process has been unbelievable so if you would like to become a Sunspa youth panel member in the future you, you know um, have that in mind today and, and please uh, contact uh, Eleanor and Rachel and, and um, ask them how how to do we uh, how do we become like 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 you guys because I'm forever thinking you know that that of of the the, the, the future but I'm really excited because I know I see these guys on a regular basis every couple of months I know what they have to offer I'm really excited for the next uh, hour hour uh, so I'm going to shut up now and and get you and let these guys tell you and show you and 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 you get a feel for 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 what the sounds for youth panel actually is. Thanks Malcolm, what an introduction. <laughs> um, well first of all I think the best part then to step right into is going over what was the purpose of this panel and what we've actually gone on to define it as. So in terms of what the ages of the youth panel are, it's 16 to 25 year olds and I think at the moment we're mainly about 18 to 24 um, but we advise the board and we advocate for all the youth perspectives on whatever the direction that Simpsburg are currently discussing um, and we've gone into looking at our own terms of reference, our own um, board pledges and seeing how we can influence on what these deliveries and strategies look like. Um, so what's written down in front of you is um, essentially our, mi our mission um, in get getting this panel together. Um, but first of all we're also then just going to introduce ourselves because I think that's probably best place to start. Um, so my name's Eleanor, I am currently work for England Netball as the East Midlands Regional Coordinator, um, which looks at things such as organising co coaching courses within the region, uh, club development and liaising with our regional board um, and general sort of communications throughout the region. Um, I graduated from Loughborough University about three years ago uh, with a degree in Geography and Sports Science and went straight into working for Volleyball England after that. Um, but my time at university, I did loads of things within sport, um, event management committees, all sorts of things. Um, but actually, I'm a rugby player by trade, um, still playing county level at the moment. Um, but my reason for joining the, the panel was to support young people entering uh, the workforce into this sporting sector. And currently at the moment, I think a lot of our youth panel are looking at how we can get young people's sport back on track and recover after this pandemic. Um, so that's a little bit from me. Uh, I'll pass along to Rachel. Hi everyone. Um, so I'm Rachel. I'm a recent sports coaching graduate from Cardiff Metropolitan University. Um, I've My main sports gymnastics, I've been involved with it for 15 years now. Um, I was a gymnast myself, but for the last eight years, I've really found my passion within coaching. Then recently um, at university, I'd say over the past four years, I really found a passion um, with disability coaching as well. Um, definitely in multi-sports. Um, I'm still a part of mainstream, but I do have a big passion for disability. Uh, the main reason I joined the panel was just to use my voice on behalf of the younger sporting generation. Especially being a young coach, we have that um, level with children that maybe older coaches don't have because we're more approachable. 
So I knew this panel was a, a great opportunity to engage and motivate more participation in sport and physical activity. Um, so we're also going to let you know who else is on the panel with us. Um, so, um, so first of all, I introduce uh, Daniel. Um, he's a sports and coaching development graduate from the University of Glasgow, uh, currently employed with Scottish Sports Futures as a youth development coordinator. We've also included a little bit from each of them about why they wanted to join the panel that you can uh, read on the screen currently. Um, then we've got Chris, who's currently a final year student at the University of Bolton studying uh, sport development and coaching. Um, I think a lot of us um, all joined the panel pretty recently. Um, there's a few of us that have been here a couple of years, um, of which I think Daniel and Gareth were the two that have stayed um, since the start of its um, the panel. Then we've got Dylan, and Dylan is a student at Glasgow and studies what was he doing? Sorry. Uh, he's employed at Glasgow Sports Inclusion Football Department. Um, would you like to introduce Gareth, Rachel? Yeah, of course. Um, so Gareth also went to Cardiff Met, so we were um, students alongside each other. He's actually been a part of the panel since it launched in 2018. Um, between 2017 and 2020, um, he studied a sports course at Cardiff Met. Um, in addition to this, he has worked closely with other national governing bodies and organisations such as Disability Sport Wales, so we share that passion together. Um, and more recently, he's gone into Welsh Rowan, where he's currently a development officer. Um, Jack, um, he's currently also at Cardiff Met, at the Met. Um, he's a PhD um, student. He's researching contemporary free approaches to promoting physical activity and um, his background is also in sports coaching and development and um, he's coached cricket um, for a while at school club and regional levels and then lastly we've got Farron and um, she's currently in her final year um, studying sports and business management at Brighton University. Farron is a very keen runner and she actually completed the London Marathon in 2019. So we're just going to go over some recent work that the panel has done um, and some achievements that we've done since we've joined the panel this year. So I'm going to start off with our most recent achievement and what we've been working on. So as the panel, we decided that we'd kind of jump in with the student membership bulletin each month. We thought this was a really key factor and a way to influence the younger sporting generation on what's going on at the moment, how we're here to help and what we can do as the panel. So last month, we actually launched a mental health um, bulletin for the student membership. As the panel, we just decided together, this is a major issue at the moment um, that needs to be recognized by all organizations, especially during the pandemic. So we did it to show support um, and signpost resources available. Um, if a student's struggling, um, we basically use the resources um, student focus, so what their universities can offer, just in case they're not too sure. Um, and then we also did it just to let students know that they're not alone. Yeah, also recently on to um, looking at the recent Sport England strategy that was launched um, a couple of months ago. Um, so we had a good discussion about um, the changes that have happened since the previous strategy. Um, and we've also since gone on to looking at how that compares with the other home nations, so Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland. Um, and we've sort of started putting together um, how those compare and contrast and what that um, sporting landscape has changed in recent years. And what we aim to do with this information is to then provide it to those student members as part of future bulletins, as well as um, aid us in supporting discussions that we have with the National Youth Sports Forum um, and also it helps in the SIMSPA strategy because it means that we understand what's happening between the landscape of what SIMSPA itself is doing but what's happening in sport um, overall as well. So another thing that we've been doing and um, we've had a lot of guest speakers come onto the panel and um, mainly for information and guidance but also to understand the information we're given. 
Um, we've had meetings with the comms team, the audit and property committee, um, mainly just to understand like the land and the scope of Simspa a bit more in detail. Um, just an example, um, Malcolm, our chair, he came in and did a session on personal branding. So to us, that was understanding our own personal development. And we really think this is a key factor for the younger sporting generation to know as well. Um, so personal branding in a nutshell is just a phrase of what you do and what you stand for. Um, so we're really going to try and push with that um, in the next meetings and our next achievements. Also, what we're going to on to doing is some more governance side of things, which is looking at the board pledge. Um, so the board within Simpsonville have a pledge that they all agree to. Um, but some of that we figured didn't really sit well, as well with us um, being the group that we were. So I'll show you what we've adapted it to. So this is what we've adapted the board pledge to be. So the way that we sort of challenged and changed this um, was that one particular thing we added was that part of our um, pledge was to challenge what the board did um, to make sure that we're not just agreeing with them, but we're making sure that we can test that they're doing things for the right reasons and truly meet the vision and mission of what we're looking to do. Um, we've also added some pieces in such as um, agreeing to how we engage with each other and our attitudes, um, putting more emphasis on our um, CPD, because um, that's so valuable, especially between all the range of people that we have on the panel. Um, and we put that into a schedule as well. We, we decided to focus it on quarterly. So that way um, it fit with all the other sort of timelines that happen within what we do. Um, and in line that as well, we changed our OKRs, which are the sort of tangible results that we want to see, um, which also got adapted in previous years. Um, and another big one that I think I put forward was about empowering each other and sharing ideas. So a big thing we've had that goes on top of the CPD is sharing what things we know about are going on within our own little worlds that we can bring together and share with each other. Um, so it's quite a big piece, this, um, that took a lot of adapting, um, but I think we've come up with something quite good there. Oh, and the other one was um, to discuss what happened previously as well. So Rachel and I have um, only been on the panel for um, nearly a year now, um, but as Malcolm introduced, the panel's a bit older than us. Um, so some of the things that we wanted to outline that um, was key to sort of where we are now um, was the original board challenged Simpsburg on the way they first presented their strategy to them. And from what I understand, they very much gave their opinions and forced them to rethink um, some of the ideas that they were putting forward. Um, so I think that was a major one um, achievement for them because it really also set in stone the importance of who the youth panel were. Um, and I definitely think that's something we need to continue. Um, on top of that, they developed our terms of reference and code of conduct that we agree to. Um, and then particularly for me and Rachel, it, it was the recruitment strategy that recruited us into the roles, um, which I think is definitely a springboard to where we think we can go. And I think these things can only be adapted and improved on as we go forwards. So we're now just going to speak about some challenges that um, we're, we're facing at the moment um, on the youth panel. Um, so obviously when we applied for the panel, um, our first few meetings, um, I think it was just after the first lockdown arrived. Um, so we had loads of new ideas that we were going to launch and we were all really excited. Um, but unfortunately the pandemic struck. Um, so we do feel like there are limitations on the achievements that we had hoped to achieve. Um, so we we just think that we do have a limitation on the panel at the moment, but we know it's not going to stop us still going for every every session. Um, the main thing we discussed, um, especially Eleanor and I, um, was just the lockdown environment can really affect the mental and physical attitude of an individual. Um, and we have to take that into account at every um, youth panel meeting. Um, obviously, it depends where you're living, if you're living with anyone else, it can really affect someone's mentality. So we just need to make sure that we are still supporting each other. Yes, it's frustrating that we can't meet up and brainstorm around a table, but we are doing the best that we can. Um, but 
as you're all aware, you're probably finding it in your own organizations. Online learning is difficult, especially if you're not great with technology. So we're all just trying to adapt, but I think we're all doing a good job. So let's just keep on going. Yeah, I think as well, yeah. we've had some changes within the staff. So I think we've had three different yeah. members of staff support us. And um, I think just getting used to how everyone's working as well and different people have been on furlough. And I think it's been really unique, but I think learning from this, it gives us a good insight as to where we want to go now. As soon as we can start planning what the future looks like, we can step forward into it. So that's where we're going to go on to next is where we think we can go. So a big part leading off of what Rachel's just said is just reconnecting the panel together. I think getting that big sort of emphasis back together, reassessing what our priorities are, where we want to go. And I think for me, I'd love it if we could get all of the Simpsby Youth Panel together um, at a board meeting, because currently just one of us attends each one that goes uh, and then brings back the actions for us. But I think it would be good to re-emphasize and also reintroduce everyone to the board again that I think would be really insightful. So um, we're currently um, looking at a mental scheme within the SIMSPA and especially the youth panel. Um, so we're actually on the final stage of this mental scheme, which is quite exciting. Um, so all we're really looking for now is um, we're just waiting the questionnaires back from the actual board itself. Mm -hmm. So then us as the youth panel members, then we can decide who we think is best suited for us. So moving forward, we'll have a mentor to guide us and just support us, not just within the youth panel, but really anything that we feel that we need mentoring on. Um, it could be sport related, youth panel related, or just for own personal development. And then one of the biggest steps that we as a panel think is gonna be a major impact and influence on Simspa is a digital media push. We've been speaking about creating a YouTube channel where we upload videos um, weekly or monthly um, to the Simps for memberships or to the public. Um, we did discuss doing transferring this to Facebook Live within the pandemic because obviously it's just a bit more feasible with everyone working from home. So the channel and the Facebook Lives, um, basically what we're doing here today, introducing the panel members, um, going over the purpose of the panel, the vision and mission, and what we are actually doing and why we do it. Um, I think it's really important that people um, below us, so the younger generation, actually understand Simpsba, what we do, why we do it, and what we can achieve if we put our minds together. Yeah, so I think that leads to sort of what does this future look like? So. This is a bit more long term, but it's that continually to challenge and influence the Simpsonba board um, in what they're doing and where they're going with it. Uh, the provision and representation of the youth perspective, because um, the way things change so quickly at the moment as well, especially this digital side of things, which I think the pandemic has really pushed people to have a refocus on, um, has been really key. Um, and then just giving young people the awareness of Simpsba, what it does, the effects, the employability and confidence within the sector, because one thing in sport particularly is there is no set pathway through this sector. You can go so many different directions with it, but I think giving people the awareness of what those different paths could look like, but I think it's also giving employers the confidence to understand that the value that young people have and what they bring with, to the sector, even if that pathway isn't a straightforward one. Um, I'd also just like to add one more thing. Um, Eleanor and I, um, both females in the sport, we also just believe enough's enough, um, especially with the barriers in sport um, in today's society. We think age and gender, especially in sport jobs at the moment, is a, is a big topic to speak about, um, and also universal proportion. We just think Simpsba, and especially us as the youth panel, we have a major influence on these risks. Um, so I just think we need to understand that everyone requires a different lens. So if that's a group that's underestimated, such as women or disabled, we need to make sure that these risks are, are considered and that it, one of these groups aren't just put to the side because of the stereotypical group. Um, so we just need to make sure that we have a voice now so we need to use that to make sure that these risks aren't um, 
decreasing the chance of people with a disability or because of a certain gender that they can't participate in a certain sport. Eleanor, is, is, is it okay if I give a couple of examples of um, the theoretical continuing to challenge and influence some support? Is that if I give a couple of examples to the, yeah. to the, to the um, I'm going to say the viewers, the attendees, what that actually looks like in real life? Uh, yeah, yeah. So for the first cohort, um, um, and about the, the second meeting, uh, we, we were in a, a standoff. So I, I'm, I'm also senior independent director for uh, the, the main board. And we got in a standoff where uh, the, the first group uh, in the youth panel said, well, um, unless we get our representative voice on the main board, not really much use is it really we're just listening to you Malcolm and then you taking it back how do we know that you're representing as well and I went good point and uh, and I said right I'm going to go back to the main board and say look we, we want a representation on the main board from the youth panel which I was thinking don't know how well this is going to go down so I speak to the chairman and I deliver it in a manner actually this is not going to go away and uh, you can go back and tell them if it's a, a negative answer and he said, no, love it, love it. So from that day onwards, uh, there's been a youth panel uh, a member actually at the, the, the main board. So that's example one. Example two for this cohort is the digital platform. And they've clearly said to me that, that since we aren't moving fast enough, uh, we need to get a grip on this. Uh, and this isn't going to go away. This is something that we've chose. Uh, to take forward and we really think it's important for our generation it's not going to go away Malcolm uh, what are you doing about it and I heard that heard that uh, so that's just two examples of, of of what that voice is in reality and how challenging and the, probably the best example is is the fact both the groups have looked at the, the existing sense for strategy and if I can say it in nice terms I would say, like, stripped it back. It's probably a wee bit stronger than that. And, and to Simspa's um, uh, uh, fair reflection, um, the head of operations, uh, Spencer, uh, came to the first meeting and said, actually, too good, and, and, and rewrote aspects of the strategy based on um, the, the youth panel's input. So that's three great examples of what that voice actually um, sounds like and what it does and what it achieves sorry just back back to you guys that's okay yeah that was the end uh, end of the bits from us so we're happy to start taking any questions if unless you wanted to add anything else malcolm no well th a huge thanks um one thing for me was just what shone through that entire presentation and i know we've gone through it quite quickly and we could probably spend a, a lot longer really drilling into a lot of the great work you've done and a lot of the great objectives that you will do in the future is just is just the passion that really comes across you know connected to the purpose that you've got um as a panel you've only been established a couple of years but you've already shook things up quite a lot and i'm sure you'll continue to do that in the future and that's really part of, of what it is you're designed to do to really bring that youth perspective but the passion was just absolutely shining through so a huge thanks for that um i mean one of the one of the things as a as a father of of two girls as well who are very active themselves i'm very conscious of the inequalities that we have within sport and physical activity so that for me on a personal level i really connect with that and that really excites me about you know what it is that you can achieve um within the sector I think so it's just a, a big thanks for me um, I know we've got one question that's just come through but um, as just one question back at you Eleanor and Rachel are there any types of questions that you would like our attendees to perhaps ask of you um, or are you just happy to take everything and anything that they're willing to throw at you um, we're, we're happy to take anything obviously but we please keep in consideration we've only been on the panel for less than a year um, obviously Malcolm will hopefully give us a hand on any questions we can't answer um, but yeah no go for it it's absolutely fine 
Well, well, um, I can see we've had a, a, a comment and a question come in from Daniel Fleur. So thank you for that. So as a youth panel, as a youth panel at Simspa, this panel is closest to the experience of school and university. Best players to be aware of the leaps that have been made in scientific study as to how mind and body work together. The youth panel would be best placed to evaluate the current school curriculum as to its efficacy in teaching the future generation how to maintain its physical and mental well-being. It is always education, education, education. So what is the panel's involvement or SIMS for the organisation doing to engage with governments to take a more holistic roadmap approach to health for the nation? Yeah. So exercise, diet, lifestyle, and how it will impact the ability to have a happy, full, and productive life. So with full inclusivity, does Simspa Youth Panel engage with government to improve the government's approach to health, as this is key to the nation's future health? Wow, that was testing my voice, that question. But, um, <laughs> thank well, you for posing that. What I'll do is I'll buy the guy some time to think about it. And, and I'll, um, it's a, listen, it's a fantastic uh, 10 questions in there uh, um, so so what my role is is part of that kind of mentor and coaching something that the guys get back out of it is is I'm re I'm working on a program with them to be less involved on outcomes more involved on the process more more, more involved uh, in the holistic approach and the organic approach to everything that that, that we try and and achieve and indeed the OKR um, strategy that's adopted by SIMSPA and uh, the youth panel is, is ag Agile Methodology, which Agile Methodology focuses on the process and fo focuses less on, on the, out the, out the, out the output, with a view that if you actually get to a process that you enjoy, you're going to be happy, fitter, mentally uh, more, more, more capable, and actually, do you know what? You're going to have joy in your life. No happiness, joy. So, something that is going to be sustainable for the rest of your, your life. Things make you happy. Joy is, is inbuilt with you. And that's all about going through the process. So we work every single meeting. I talk to them about, about the, 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 the process. So to answer the question, we are very much, a, 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 we're, we're working on this a, and, and the guys recognize it. And, and, but, but sometimes, the best place to start is to look at the, the man in the mirror, the woman in the mirror, and start changing yourself first of all, before you start changing businesses, before you start changing the rest of your family, before you start changing sectors, before you start changing nations in terms when you engage with the, 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 the government. And the final point was, was in relation to how, how serious, I think, the question was, does everybody take us? And, and, and are we drilled in at our government level? Absolutely, 100%, uh, not directly, but through uh, the main board and the main officers, Phil, as you know, in terms of, I know how much you guys are drilled in at a government level. And I know, uh, because I've heard the Chief Executive Tara talk about some of the things that have come directly from the youth panel that then make it into uh, 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 government um, um, uh, uh, contacts and connections. So so it's, it's, it's yes, we, we, we understand that we need to be focused in the process as, as the curriculum does. And that's my final point. That if we, we would be a lot more uh, uh, further forward in, in, in terms of a nation if we actually just focused on the process, focused on the learner as an individual rather than outcomes. Uh, that's just my point of view. That's sorry, that's not Simspa's point of view. That's my point of view. Uh, but but I think I think the 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 the, the uh, the individual who asked the question, I think she's with me on that. I uh, know she wouldn't ask the question. Um, so it's a yes and yes, uh, but it's a work in progress. Uh, and hopefully I've given enough time to, to Eleanor and Rachel to really answer the question. Um, I think it would be great to bring something back to the panel about discussing what it looks like in schools. Um, I personally can't comment much about schools because uh, I grew up abroad, so I wouldn't be much help other than university sport. Um, but I think it'd be definitely an interesting topic to discuss. Um, I think also that would be an important discussion to have with teachers because they're the ones on the ground delivering this. Um, so they're probably more in a position to look at that um, and be more proactive and actually constructively look at how to change it. 
Um, we could definitely give the youth perspective on it because I think Malcolm's definitely right that we need to start looking holistically because it definitely isn't all about sport. It's more about keeping people just active, especially I think this lockdown has showed. Like, look how successful Joe Wicks has been um, getting into people's living rooms nine o'clock in the morning, putting on all sorts of costumes and just having fun with parents and their kids. Um, I think it's making sure that element of fun and enjoyment um, is there from the get-go because it keeps people lifelongly uh, involved in sport. I think as well, um, as the panel, we could definitely reach out to like organisations such as um, the local councils. Um, I used to work for um, a company called 560. So we used to go into schools, do an hour of coaching or physical activity a day, five days a week. And it really encourages kids to try sports that they're maybe too scared to try in school because of the stereotypical girls can't play football or boys can't do gymnastics. We would try and break down those barriers and say, just give it a go. Like we're not in school time. We're here. We were an outside source. And it really just made kids smile. They would try something new. And I definitely think that as the panel, we could raise that to the board. And then we could get that connection with the local 560 teams. So, yeah, I definitely think we'll go back to the panel with that. So thank you. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. And I think um, Danielle has, has got another comment to hear that she's really pleased. It's, it's process and not just outcomes or achievements. So, um, no, thank you for that. And I think you touched on a really important point is that I'm sure we can all relate with the experience of sport being a, a sort of a mandatory thing at school and you know the way in which sport and physical activity is put ac across has such a fundamental impact on our relationship with physical activity or sport for life you know it really does set the scene beyond that so getting it right is critical for people to have a, a joyful relationship with sport and physical activity um you know it's it's absolutely fundamental and it's it's a really important point um Mark Samuels on the chat has, has commented saying, hi team, enjoyed the presentation. Moving forward, what are some of the key areas that as a panel you want to explore and impact upon in the future? I think just to jump in first, I think short terms especially is looking at the recovery of sport, especially with this pandemic, because I think the way it's impacted on young people isn't just it's taken away their Friday, Saturday, Sundays playing sport with their friends. It's taken away volunteer opportunities. It's taken away their um, ability to look, go to events, be involved in the atmospheres, um, get involved in learning more about the sector. It's not just their physical education that's been impacted. So I think particularly looking at older, uh, older young people, sort of sixth form looking at university, um, there are things that, especially if you want to go into this sector as a job, um, employers look for things more than just their degrees nowadays. It's all of these extracurricular things that now aren't going to have existed for people in this last year. But I think given, making sure that they have those opportunities that employers want is somehow reprovided or there's another avenue that they can look at that some people have gone straight forward into um, doing digital courses. But I think one of the biggest things I learned when I was leaving university is my degree was almost a tick box, but the 300 hours of volunteer work I'd done within sport at university was almost what was more looked at. And I think in the last year, people haven't had that. So I think looking forward, I think making sure that people regain those opportunities um, is really big. I think as well, um, just what Eleanor went off, um, in the previous youth panel meeting, we spoke about, obviously, we've been online learning now for the, well over a year just. Um, so we spoke about um, the anxieties that children and adults will have returning back into workplace and going back to sport, um, especially I know some of the gymnasts I coach, they're scared that they would have forgotten how to do a certain skill or they just won't mentally be able to prepare themselves for competitions again. So the area that we want to improve, especially we're really looking at mental health again. Um, I know I've I've already mentioned it but we just need to drill it down to organizations that this is a major factor in sport and physical activity at the moment 
Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I've um, managed to be part of a mental health first aid course um, as part of the work I do at Netball. And I sort of went into it sort of knowing bits and pieces, but it ended up being, I think it was four sessions over two weekends. And the amount that you realise you don't know is massive and the resources that you then realise are available um, is so, like the resources are there. So much of it's already there. It's, it's making people aware of where they are and then how to implement them. Um, and I think that would be really interesting to look at. Well, <clears throat> thank you for that. Um, another question from Shelley Austin. Um, I saw on the chat earlier, actually, when Shelley introduced herself, um, she also mentioned that she's in the process of setting up a youth panel. Um, so she's asking for your perspective on what communication channels would you advise that would be effective when recruiting for youth panel members? Um, so Shelley is looking to create a youth panel for netball, but also would like to welcome a non-netball representative to give a really full transparent view to in, um, around participation. What are your thoughts? Um, I would definitely, especially um, today, I would definitely um, use the first point on social media. Um, I would just get it out on literally every site you can think of, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, I would just get it out there. People will start sharing it. You'll get loads of footfall on it. Um, and you never know. People across the world could see it. <laughs> you never know. Um, we also think that... Um, Go into different local clubs near you. It doesn't just have to be netball. Um, go into the schools, maybe just create some flyers. Um, obviously, like you said, the youth panel, like it's such a big influence. You want, you want it to get across and you want voices to be heard. So I would just signpost it absolutely everywhere if you have the resources available. Yeah, I think social media is key. I mean, you can get in touch with um, partners, like getting in contact with clubs who can then pass it down to their teams or to schools, get it to the PE teacher, pass it down that way, I think is the way that it then also travels by word of mouth. And it gets, because I think when someone tells you specifically in front of you, oh, you should apply for this, you're more likely to do it. Um, and I think if you're specifically looking at netball, getting in contact with someone like your local development officer um, or the regional coordinator like I am, um, they're definitely able to signpost you in the right directions on that. So can, can I just add a couple of points to that? First, firstly, Shelley, uh, listen, well done for recognising the fact that, that you need a youth panel. That's you at the start line. A lot of people don't get to the start line in terms of national governing bodies, etc. So that's fantastic. Um, I think uh, the point about an independent person is really my role within Synthbook because I'm an, I, they don't, people, you know, the sector don't vote for me. It's, you know, it's, you know, unfortunately or unfortunately, but to have that level of governance of an independent person that can cross the barriers and give honest, authentic advice without having a mandate for anything, I think is really important. So I think that's independent and individual is, is, is you've, you've got to have that, I think, on, on the youth panel. And in terms of communication, I don't think it matters what platform you use, just articulate it very, very simply and make it look like and sound like, because it is available and accessible for everybody to actually sit on that panel. Everybody has a equality that, that could bring to the table. And that's because they're young people. Uh, and a lot of young people might be turned off by uh, 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 the wrong use of language or the wrong type of language. Uh, just communicate it really simply and, and say that this, this is available for everybody. I think that's one of the things that we, we did right at the start of uh, uh, in terms of the first uh, communication that went out for, for, the, for the first panel. Well, <clears throat> thank you for that, Malcolm. Um, so Paul Younger has made a comment to say, Eleanor, Rachel, Malcolm, what a breath of fresh air hearing what you are doing. A quick question is, how do I make youngsters I'm engaged with aware of the youth section and how it may benefit them? So I'm, I'm kind of... I'm assuming that perhaps he's um, works in education. Um, so, uh, you know, how can perhaps he um, raise the awareness of the youth panel to some of the students or people who he is connected with? I, I, I think, so I'll take that again and I'm, I'm going to put the, 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 the guys up in front. Sorry, Eleanor, Eleanor. Eleanor knows I do this. 
I say, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say anything. Then I don't let anybody talk at the meetings. That's the last thing I'm going to say on that subject matter. Is, is inv invite one is down. Invite me down. Invite Eleanor down. Invite Rachel down. Invite Liam. Invite one is down. We will come down and talk to your to your your, your group, and we will be like this. We'll get them enthused because we want these guys to be sensible members of the future, and 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 we want them. No, I don't want just these guys to have a voice. I want every single young person who plays sport in the UK to have a voice and influence uh, the next Sport England uh, strategy, the next SINFA strategy, and the next national guidelines for, 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 for governing bodies. Why not? Absolutely. Um, so Danielle Flo has asked a, another question. What about introducing a mentoring program by, by the youth panel of Simsbury to mentor sixth formers looking to have a future career in sport science or sport or physical activity? I think that's a fantastic idea. I'd love to bring that to the panel and have a further discussion about it because I think that is a brilliant idea. And I think if that's something we really want to broaden, it would be I mean, there's only probably about six of us, I think, uh, six or eight of us. So I think we might be too small to go around, but I think definitely starting to even pilot that first time and then see where that can go, I think would be a fantastic idea. So I definitely want to take that one away. Yeah, I agree with you, Eleanor. I think that would be a, a great influence. And I think like, I know when I was in sixth form, I knew I wanted to go into sport, but it would have been nice just to have someone to give me a bit of guidance and support and show me the pathways of how to get there. So I definitely, I love that idea. So thank you. That's, um, I'm just jumping between the chat and the Q&A. So apologies if I've missed any of the comments. Um, I will scan back up, but I can see we've had a, a question from Tony Broughton. Um, hi panel, what are your thoughts on the youth obesity in the country and what are your ideas on addressing some of these issues within Simsbury? Such a big question really because I think youth obesity is is an ongoing one, it's not a recent thing, it's been going on for years hasn't it? Um, I think part of that will be looking at the Sport England strategy and making sure that Simsbury's in line with that and that part of what they're doing can help these fundamental issues. Um, I think that is a massive one. I think as well, um, like we spoke about earlier, just maybe getting in touch with um, the schools on social media. Um, like Malcolm said, one of us going down to our local schools, universities, colleges, um, and just promoting, showing the benefits of sport, physical activity, it doesn't have to be competitive. It can literally just be bouncing a ball off the wall to work on coordination or something where they don't, they subconsciously are doing physical activity without knowing. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll look into that. I think understanding as well for young people, the diversity in sport and physical activity, it isn't just playing football, rugby, cricket. Those aren't your three options, um, which often are the ones that are given in schools that I know for boys anyway, that it's understanding that they can go rock climbing, they can do a yoga session in the garden, they can do all these other options that I think one thing with lockdown is people have seen digitally all these different options that I hope that in some ways that they found an avenue that they enjoy because I think in enjoying sport is the key way that you're going to keep people involved and that social side particularly is one that keeps people coming back. Um, and I think just making sure that they're aware of it, because I think so many people focus on just sport for sport's sake and doing drills and skills that actually the game based approach that I think is coming out at the moment, particularly from team sports, it's not about doing the same drill 100 times. It's putting into an app, uh, into an applied space that they almost don't realize that they're learning skills while they're having fun. No, you're absolutely right. And I can see Sharon Palmer in the comments um, has just said, amen, in agreement, I think, <laughs> with what you just said. Um, so, uh, yeah, and again, Tony Broughton, thanks for the response. Agree, fun is definitely a key. Um, just to <clears throat> avoid the pain of listening to my croaky voice, we've had another question from Zerinka Mendes. Um, so rather than me repeating that question, I'm going to invite Eleanor and Rachel 
perhaps just take a look at that in the Q&A box. Hopefully you can see that um, and uh, see if you can um, give a response to it. Uh, the one about S&C coaches? Yes. yes. Yeah, so I definitely think there's massive benefit in S&C coaches. So in my rugby background, uh, I played for Hong Kong while I was um, studying there and um, when I grew up there. And a big part then coming into university was the amount of support that if you have an S&C coach, it's not just about going to the gym. It's about injury prevention. It's about better applying the way that you're doing drills. And I think particularly, I think it's making sure coaches appreciate the value in it, because I do think that sometimes they don't appreciate the, the massive value it brings. Um, and I think if you can find an S&C coach that understands the audience that they're working with, whether that's teenagers, disabled um, children, it's making sure that they're also qualified for that. And I think that's one place Simpsa comes in, that it can give that confidence to people that, they are able to do that role because it's not necessarily a formal qualification. Brilliant, thank you. Um, just reading down, I can see that I made a slightly um, inaccurate assumption of Paul who asked a question a little while ago. Um, he actually works in IT, but he volunteers as chair for British Canoeing. Um, so uh, I think he's going to take us up on the offer of inviting us to the, to the meeting. So um, apologies on the inaccurate assumption, but th thank you in the same token for the invite. We'll definitely take you up on that. Um, Andrew Christopher has asked, how would the youth panel address socioeconomic restraints? Wow, that's a big question. <laughs> um, I, I can definitely appreciate that. I did a geography and sports science degree and a big part of my geography side of my degree was looking at those socioeconomic barriers that that sociological reference between geography and sports science, I think is massively not always understood. Um, I think it is definitely coming to the foreshore because these lower socioeconomic groups, LSEG, um, I know that Sport England in the past has particularly given targets to sporting organisations on what impact they need to be having in certain postcodes. Um, but I think there, there definitely needs to be a better way of doing it because I think particularly in this pandemic, it's the digital poverty. It's that people who don't have access to phones, laptops, resources that potentially in this whole pandemic, they've had, had absolutely no contact with any sort of sport and physical activity. And I think if there's any way that we can try and resolve some of that, whether that's signposting to funding options, because councils have options, things like this girl can, they all have some sort of pots of funding that it's not always, it's knowing where these resources are and how to best use them, because a lot of them already exist. So can I, can I just take that and, and I'm going to, I'm going to, give two uh, polar opposite uh, uh, aspects of that continuum. So the first is a personal one, is that so, um, and the guys know this because I, I'm proud of it, but like I never talked about it until about five years ago. So I'm a product of care. So I, 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 I was in care, uh, um, lived in, in poverty as a child. It's hard, trust me, it's hard. Uh, um, um, and you know, that, so that's back in the day. So I'm hoping it's, it's better today but 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 I get that I know what that feels like um uh, in, in in terms of of where you have to go to to actually become and achieve something that you know you can do uh, and there's just barrier after barrier after barrier because everybody tells you uh, what they think you are uh, whether it's sport or as an individual etc so I know what that feels like uh, so we're just about to see how good the universal proportionalism uh, uh, strategy is for Sport England now, aren't we? So that's the other end of the continuum. We're just about to see how this, how good this national strategy is because it's aimed directly at that question to rip down every single barrier uh, for everybody that sits in front of them. It's not about equality. It's not about equity. It's about everybody achieving what they want to achieve. Uh, so we're just about to see how good that 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 strategy uh, uh, is. No, ab absolutely, uh, Malcolm, and thank you for sharing that with us. Um, we've, I think we've gone through a lot of the questions, so I've, I've got a couple of questions for you, if that's okay. We are probably going to wrap up early, but we've had such a great 
um, series of questions and engagement coming through. So the first one was, um, you spoke in your presentation around um, the impact of COVID on you as a youth panel in being able to you know, connect and engage and some of the limitations that that perhaps presented. Um, I just wondered if you could perhaps give a little bit more detail on on how it was as a youth panel sort of and how it's been during during COVID since March, you know, perhaps in comparison to how it how it was prior to March last year. Um, so as youth panel, we have several meetings that we have to attend a year. Um, so normally we'd meet in the sport park in Loughborough. Um, we'd sit around a table, we would brainstorm, give ideas. And I feel like in person, you can really bounce off one another. Um, personally, I don't feel like we've got to know each other as well over a webcam. We don't really know each other's um, personal backgrounds. We know what sport we're into. We know what roles we're doing at the moment, but we don't really know each other's passions. And I really think that's what the panel is lacking at the moment. But we are really hoping in the next steps when we can meet, that we will get that stronger connection with one another. Um, and I think as well, the, the one thing we're struggling with is, um, I think is confidence over the webcam. It's, it's such a different platform that we're all, we're not used to it. So I think some people are a bit scared or anxious to raise ideas because they just don't know how we're gonna respond because we don't know each other as well as we should do. So I think that is a, a, a quite a big limitation at the moment that we're struggling with. Um, thank you for that. And Eleanor, I don't know if you had any anything else to add from your Yeah, I think I definitely agree with what Rachel said. I think it's also hard to compare it to what it was before because we weren't involved in that. Um, we came into place almost, I think we had our interviews to attend this panel uh, almost as soon as lockdown started because um, we even had our interviews to become part of this online um, so I think especially if people aren't used to having this um, sort of platform because in my day-to-day -day work I think I'm probably on calls probably three times a day so for me it doesn't really make much difference but I'm sure some people that are probably personal trainers or used to sort of being more in person it's definitely a new environment that I think has definitely itself pushed the sporting sector to look at it as a as an option now um, but I think definitely reconnecting sort of getting that sort of sense of uh, a group together to empower us all together to move forward I think is a big one which is why I think as well if we can all attend the board meetings together on one occasion um, I think it could massively help and give people confidence that they're not a singular youth panel attending this board meeting with all these big people involved that I think when you've got a group you're more likely to help speak up and I think having that joint voice can also then help bring it back to our meetings um, and then start those discussing those ideas and planning those next steps again. Well, <clears throat> thank you for that. Um, so, and my last question, it's a bit of a double barrel question um, and I'm going to come to each of you and Malcolm, I'm going to include you as well. So right now, and you know, I think one word that we can all relate with as a very, um, persistent thing since March last year is just change. We are used to it. However, as it currently stands, it does feel like we're heading towards, you know, a, a direction which is going to be a little bit nearer to where we're all familiar with, you know, being able to meet people we know, being able to meet up with friends, you know, the, the, the ability to get back into sport and physical activity that has really been restricted for such a long period. Um, I'm going to start with you, Eleanor. So I'd like you to perhaps share what really excites you about moving into that kind of new normal. And I, I know that's a phrase perhaps people are a little bit bored with, but whatever that looks like when we get there, um, can you give me one thing that excites you about it, but also in the same in the same breath, one concern. So something perhaps that concerns you about what this new future state is going to be like and and the impact of that in the I suppose in the context of sport and physical activity um I think on a personal level I'd be excited to do my normal job because I started my job two weeks before lockdown so I guess technically I've never done my job yet um so I'm really excited to get back involved in that I think what excites me about the new normal is the amount of probably 
I think there's this big sense of community that can come out of this, that everyone's stepped out of almost the shadows that's been the last year, that I think it could be exciting, all these opportunities that people are going to step forward to. And we've got uh, the 2022 Commonwealth Games coming up as well in Birmingham that I think um, will be a key thing within sport that people will be looking forward to particularly. I think a concern would be getting left behind. I think a lot of businesses have struggled and that's businesses in and out of sport. And I think if people aren't able to get back onto this new recovery and this new way that people are interacting with sport and physical activity that they could just fall, be fall behind, uh, that could be losing funding. It could be um, not having enough income to just keep going forwards or giving up on what their current goals are um, and having to change what their initial drive and missions were. Brilliant. Thank you for sharing that. Um, a great answer there, Eleanor. Um, Rachel, I'm going to come to you now. Okay. Um, so I just think, um, like Eleanor said, um, exciting just to get, to get back out there. Unfortunately, I'm not in a sport job at the moment because I am a recent graduate. So I actually graduated in the middle of the pandemic. Um, but I know when sport reopens, there will be opportunities to get back into that. So I'm excited for that. Um, and a, a, a personal concern is going back into another lockdown, personally. And I think everyone is worried about that. But like Eleanor said, the community around you, and I think we just need to all show support of one another. We've got through three lockdowns near enough. So we know we can do it. We just need to keep positive and keep marching on as a community. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you. And Malcolm, I'm going to come to you last then. So one thing that excites you and one thing that concerns you. Okay. So, so in terms of excitement, I think COVID's been, it's been, um, I, I think it's been useful for me in terms of I have, I have new resolutions, I have a new outlook, I've had a lot of time to self-reflect uh, to such an extent. I've, I've moved jobs during, during, during COVID. Um, and I'm bursting to share that now. Like I'm bursting to share the new me with everybody. And I'm sure there's a lot of people like 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 that. I've realized, and I think I said it before, that life is a verb, it's not a noun. Life is is what you do, it's not a thing. And I think I've just realized that. Um what I'll, I think I'll I'll miss and and, and the, what I need to try and carry forward to the 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 I've, I've actually been a, a, a really positive in terms of, 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 of COVID is that, and it actually links to the previous question. So as a chair, uh, um, instead of not being in the room with the guys, having uh, uh, been external and virtual to them, I've tried, I've worked really hard to listen and ask questions because, because I see the guys and you can see when people are contemplating and, and having difficult times because the camera's on them and, and you see that and, 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 and I think that's made me really more empathetic and I want to, and I want to take that from lockdown into into uh, uh, the new normal uh, uh, uh. so one positive one negative and I'm worried that I won't do that I'm worried that I just get caught up in life and I return to the to the old Malcolm and the bet that and the guys know this um, and I don't know how I don't I think that the the first cohort group, thought I was reasonably funny. These guys don't think I'm funny at all. I think a lot of my jokes get lost over uh, the internet. So I'm hoping to reestablish um, uh, the fact that I'm actually a fun guy, uh, uh, representative uh, of, of, of young, young, young people. Uh, that's brilliant. Thank you so much. And um, that the, uh, the comment you made around sort of empathy, I, I can really relate with that. And I think that is gonna be something that we as a sector are going to need an even greater abundance to what we've had in the past um given the uh, you know given the situation and you know trying to re-engage with people um i think we're going to really need to focus on that and really enhance our ability to show it effectively um i would just like to say a huge thank you um first of all to everyone who's joined us today and anyone that's checking this video out um, at a later point. Um, and secondly, but by no means least, um, our youth panel. So Eleanor, Rachel and Malcolm, um, thank you for giving us your time this afternoon. 
I've really enjoyed it. I've seen a lot of comments coming through, I think. Uh, and actually, just a little bit of encouragement for you there, Malcolm. You are funny. Believe in yourself. <laughs> I've just seen the centre. <laughs> 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 brilliant so, oh. yeah a huge thing. listen thank you phil uh thank you guys what a fantastic job that you you, you guys have done and, and, and are doing um listen if you want to make a difference join simspa no matter what age you are and and i promise you these guys will give you the opportunity to, to get what you want to say and uh, get it get it out there brilliant Oh, well, there's nothing more for me to say. So thanks a lot. Enjoy the rest of your Friday and have a super weekend. And um, uh, as of Monday, things are going to be just easing ever so slightly. So take care and uh, look after yourself. Cheers. Thank you, thank everyone. You. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.